we saw that the solution of the wave functions defines the atomic orbitals and there can be many number of atomic orb orbitals in an atom okay so many atomic orbitals are possible atomic orbitals are possible and we'll now get to know what these different quantum numbers actually signify okay they have got a specific significance to it so when you say n is equal to so much you you will understand that it means something and when you say l is equal to so much it means something and m is equal to so much it again means something right so they have specific connotations and they are not as vague or, or as vague as the as the the original equation to which they are a solution right which we have somehow unfortunately not been able to solve and see for ourselves why these three quantum numbers come up as the solution right so fine let that be behind us because because we we told that 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 require a hell lot of mathematics which we are not equipped to handle at this stage so 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 n l and m signify signify so so uh, i should not write it here okay so so n signifies basically basically the the distance from the nucleus the distance from the nucleus and and if it does that from the nucleus and in a sense that's why if, if, if larger is the distance greater is the size fine so hence the size right hence the size and to a large extent to a large extent the energy of the electron right the energy of the electron did we get that okay so so i should say i should say this is your principle the principle quantum number m right this n so that signifies the distance okay why do we say a to a large extent because because in in mono electronic n alone defines the energy signifies the energy in the in in the multi electronic we said n plus l defines the energy but but a major part comes from n right so that's why we said to a large extent and not solely okay to include the multi electron atoms this n also defines the shell also defines the the shell okay the shell and the shells are named like this for n is equal to 1 the shell that the we the shell that we define is called k for n is equal to 2 it is l for n is equal to 3 it is m for n is equal to 4 it is n right and so on. so so n is equal to l is equal to 5 o and and 6 p and and we keep on going on right normally this is not used because normally we are concerned with n is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 6 i i as you soon soon see but if someone asks you if the 
principal quantum number is 4. In what shell does an atom lie? Then you will say the nth shell. Right? Correct? Fine. Now, for the nth shell, for the nth shell, the maximum allowed atomic orbitals is n square. We are not saying maximum allowed electrons. We are just saying maximum allowed atomic orbitals. We soon see how many electrons an atomic orbital will orbital will contain. Okay, but for that you have to wait for some time. So just just hold on. I just want you to 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 lay emphasis on the thing is that this is atomic orbitals. Okay, and not the electrons. We understand? Fine. So it, it forms a shell. Shell is something that is hollow. Right? A, a, a spherical shell is some is, is, a, is a hollow shell. Right? So it is it is kind of of this kind of thing. Okay. So within which the atomic orbitals will be found. So it is not a solid sphere, it is a shell, fine? You again understand about this. So, so you may say that, that they will be, say, from here to there, anywhere between this, fine? Fine? So it basically signifies the, the distance and hence the, 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 the distance and hence the the distance and hence the size and the energy and the energy okay distance hence size and hence energy why why energy because if you are going farther away from here with an electron say you're going from here to there what are you doing you are doing work why because because this has got an attractive tendency there is there is a force the system has a force that pulls you like that and if you are doing a work that is opposite to the to the system system pull what happens that work gets transformed into energy that we that, that, that we that we learn in the work energy theorem right whenever you do the work whenever an external agency does the work that gets stored in the system as energy get that as energy so, so, so that's why. Now, now, once we've done this, we come to the, the azimuthal quantum number L, right? So, so we come to the, the second, that's called the azimuthal quantum number, quantum number, L. Okay. This is also called, first of all, also called the orbital quantum number. Okay. Also called orbital quantum number or subsidiary quantum number. Orbital quantum number or or subsidiary subsidiary quantum number okay designated by L now this primarily indicates the shape of the object okay it indicates the shape of the object indicates the shape of the orbital okay and it takes the value 
from 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 zero to n minus one. Understand? It takes a value from zero to n minus one. Let me elaborate. So what happens if you have if you have the the value of 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 n? Then let's let's try to see what is the value of n. If if n is equal to one, because n takes the value from one, right? So if n is equal to one, this starts from zero and goes till n minus 1 that means it starts from 0 and goes to 0 so there is only one possibility of L right when n is equal to 1 there is only one possibility okay of L so number of number of number how many okay of azimuthal quantum numbers how many are possible okay okay Th there is only one possibility you see that now I put n is equal to 2 so what are the possibilities it goes from 0 to n minus 1 that means it will start from 0 keep on hopping by 1 and reach to n minus 1 and what is n minus 1 n minus 1 is 1 so so there are two possible values 0 and 1 so how many number number how many are possible how many are possible two of them are possible now we come to n is equal to 3 what is n minus 1 n minus 1 is 2 so it starts from 0 then goes to 1 and then goes to 2 so how many are possible here there are three possibilities of L okay now we go to n is equal to 4 so it goes from 0 to 3 by hopping hopping by 1 0 1 2 3 how many are possible how many are possible four are possible four of them are possible okay do you understand do you understand so in a sense, if you see, there are as many number of azimuthal quantum numbers as n, right? It is equal to n in a sense. How many are possible? n of them. Okay? Therefore, the number of azimuthal quantum numbers possible. is equal to is equal to how, how, how much it is equal to n whatever is the value of n so if n is equal to 5 how many are possible 5 of them 0 1 2 3 4 5 okay n is equal to 7 how many are possible 7 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 fine so so that's clear fine now they they indicate okay so so takes the value this and what do they indicate let me let me kind of shift a little what do they indicate they indicate the subshell so so i am continuing with with the uh, with the topic of azimuthal quantum numbers and and you may you may be numbering them if you wish to okay i should have numbered it okay. I, I did not so 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 let us say this is 1 and this is 2 and this is 3. So I am writing the fourth point. Okay. I am writing the fourth point. So, so the fourth point is that that L indicates the the subshell okay the subshell 
N indicates the shell. This indicates the subshell and also the shape. It, okay? It indicates the shape. So, so, so whatever is the subshell is indicated by L. Fine? So you can say, I if, if I ask you, how many subshells, subshells does shell n have? Shell n is is n is equal to four, and whatever is the value of the principal quantum number okay th th that indicates that indicates n is equal to n is equal to 4 so so this is actually n is equal to 4 so what happens mm -hmm. as many numbers of subshells as is the quantum number and you can actually enumerate it 0 1 2 3 so how many it has four subshells isn't it it has four subshells Fine. Now these subshells, okay, so uh, I have the value for L, okay, and the the notation for subshell, the notation for subshell okay is for l is equal to 0 because because l takes a value 0 right it will always take a value 0 if it is 1 say it is 2 it is 3 it is 4 5 okay and, and so on then it starts like that in the, the notation here it is s and here it is p and here it is G. And here it is F. And here it is G. And here it is S. H. And so on. Okay? We go on. I, J, K, L. Sort of. We see we will not require those because the number of elements that we have currently, it suffices to, to be in F itself. Right? We do not even require the G subshell. But if in future more elements come into being, then we will require them. Fine? Okay? So that's for the subshell. Fine? So, so when I say here, so when you say this, Okay, how do you denote this? The combination n is equal to 1 and l is equal to 0 is actually 1s. Do we get that? And, and this is what? This is s, this is 2. So this is 2s. Then this becomes p, right? right. This is s, this is s, this is p, so this is. 2p subshell. This tells you that it is principal quantum number 2, the subshell number 2. Here it is S, P, B. So this is 3S. This is 3P. This is 3D. Correct? This is 4S. This is 4P. This is 4D. This is 4F. Correct? Did you get that? Fine. Next, we'll go to the magnetic quantum number. I'll retain the, the, the writings that we have done and we'll just extend it to magnetic quantum number. I do not want the video to be kind of an hour, hour length. So, so, so that's why I'm cutting it down here. Okay? Mm -hmm.